my name is Hugo Bernier, uh, but I am here today to present to you a web part sample or an extension sample by Joao Mendes called My List Notifications. Joao is on vacation and, uh, you know, as much as I begged for him to just, you know, come out of his vacation to do the presentation, uh, he just preferred that I do the presentation for him. So if you love what he did, it's all Joao's uh, hard work. Uh, if you don't like what I'm presenting, it's all my fault. All right. So uh, with that in mind, let's take a look at what he's done. So one of the things that uh, that's kind of like on brand for Joao is he likes to design user interfaces that look really clean and look like they're integrated as part of uh, SharePoint and Office. Um, here's an example of this. If I asked you where is uh, the component that Joao was designed, like where is it on this on this screen, you probably would have a hard time figuring it out. But if we zoom in and you take a look at this thing right here, that's actually the component that Joao's designed. And he always does this. He always does really kind of clean interfaces that that again they don't stick out. You don't go like, oh, this is just custom. It was built by you know, a, a bad developer, it always looks professional and clean. And that goes a long way because you want to make sure your users uh, don't feel like they have to learn a whole new user interface when they're using your web parts and your extensions. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about whether you should be uh, making changes to these areas of, of uh, a, a web part uh, or a page, uh, but that's for a bit later. All right. Now, when you click on this, uh, we'll show you in a real demo what it does, but it opens this My List notification, which actually keeps track of all the notifications, all the things that have happened in the lists that you have subscribed to. So, you know, here's an example of, of a whole bunch of notifications as taken from the screenshots that uh, Joao has pro provided. But let me show you a real demo instead. All right, so if I switch to my personal SharePoint and um, I have the, notif the the thing installed here and I have here a list of uh, libraries and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and click on this and it says, well, you have no notifications because I haven't created the subscription yet. Let me go create a subscription and let me go search for, and let's just say documents, right? Um, so now what I've done is I've actually created the subscription to a document or to the document library. Let me close this and now I want to make it clear uh, what I'm going to be showing you here. I'm not using magic shortcut keys. I'm not, you know, using uh, videos or anything like this. This is actually uh, happening in real time. I'm going to go to uh, this library and I'm going to upload uh, some files. Um, uh, there. David, David will appreciate that I use this image for him. Uh, I upload an image here and it says it's uploaded, right? And look what happened immediately. I didn't do anything. I didn't refresh the screen. Immediately my notifications kicked in. Before I do another, uh, I go look at those notifications. Let me just add, there you go, another picture. Um, and I'll just go do this and let's see what happens here. Um, now, this is the part where I might have to distract you with some things. No, it's actually pretty fast. All right. So once the notification has been received, you'll actually notice that I actually get a message here. So the same thing would happen if I was deleting a, a document to from a from a list that I'm subscribing to. Uh, if I was uh, creating, modifying, actually, let me just go modify a document. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let me just go uh, right here. I'm going to edit the metadata. And uh, this is going to be called ugly dog. And I just want to make sure I'm, I'm actually editing the right picture because that would be insulting to David. There you go. And 
there. So I just made a change to the metadata and eventually what should happen if the demo gods are with me is I should get a notification. There you go. I get a notification that something's changed. So that's kind of cool. It's not intrusive, right? And it's a great way for people to stay up to date uh, with what's going on. So again, I can go here. I can actually go click on the, the actual uh, documents to open them. I can remove the notifications or I can clear all notifications. So that's pretty much what the extension does. And because it's an extension, you can set it up so that it's automatically deployed uh, to all pages in a modern site. Uh, and you can also set it up so it gets deployed to every site uh, collection in, in your tenant if you want to. Very cool. It's not like you have to install a web part or, or do anything like that. All right, so. All right, so how do you how does it work, right? Um, Probably the worst thing to do when you want to do these kinds of interface is to do the equivalent of like if you're waiting for someone to call you, you don't pick up your phone and go hello and then oh nobody you know nobody called. I'm just gonna wait and then 30 seconds later I'm gonna pick up my phone and say hello, right? No, that's not how these types of communications work. Same thing here. We're not using a, a, a timeout or a loop or anything like that to actually see whether there's been changes. We're actually using uh, notifications to do that and just like. When your phone rings, you normally answer, except if it's me, I don't ever answer my phone. But when your phone rings, you answer the phone, and only when your phone rings, you answer your phone. Uh, same thing here. Only when there's a notification that happens, do you need to actually update the screen to actually say, hey, there's a new notification. So it's really magic. Actually, it's not really magic. It's something called socket.io. So what's socket.io? Uh, I apologize in advance if I butcher this. I'm trying to compress a lot of information in 15 minutes, but uh, Socket.io, basically imagine if you had a server and then you had a, what we'll call a client. So like, a, and maybe you're writing a chat application, right? Socket.io, the example is always chats. So let's just use that. Let's pretend you're writing a chat application. You are the client and you basically log in uh, to Teams or whatever chat application you want to use, and you say, hey, uh, Mr. Server, uh, I'm ready. Anytime you have any messages for me, please let me know, right? But also, if I want to send a message, I can just send a message to uh, to other clients. So all the other clients do the same thing. Everybody that, that wants to receive their notifications um, log in, and they all notify the server, the Socket.io server, to say, hey, if you have any messages, please let me know. So what happens when one of the clients, like the one that's highlighted here, sends a message to the server? Then the server basically notifies, it broadcasts to all the clients that have described or subscribed to this notification and all the clients receive a message. That's like the super quick version of what socket.io works, it does. Now are, you're going to, you know, come into my office and say, Hugo, you know, why would I implement a server? And I would say, well, first of all, get out of my house because my office is in my house. Uh, but you don't need to implement a server because behind the scenes, um, Microsoft and the Graph team are actually implementing uh, a socket IO service that you can use to actually send notifications to your clients. So really all we need to worry about is implementing the client which gets the notifications and subscribes to the notifications. Let's look at the code. And by the way, if you have any questions, I can't see the chat. Feel free to interrupt me or, you know, uh, Patrick, Vesa, David, if you wanted to interrupt me if there's questions, um, I will do my best to ignore them. All right, so if we look at the, uh, at the code, there's lots of code here, but one of the big things that we do in, in the code here that Joao does is in his uh, use MS Graph API uh, component, he actually has this thing called get list of socket IOs. And what he does, he actually makes a graph call uh, that goes to uh, uh, the the site, the lists, the list ID, or in the case like in the case that I use, I use my document list, and then it looks at the subscriptions for that list, and it looks specifically at the socket I/O subscriptions. This is not magic. This is actually built in 
and graph behind the scene. And so it allows you to get all the subscriptions to a list, but it also allows you to reconnect to those subscriptions using uh, Socket.io. Now, within his use Socket.io component, he's got this magical thing where he uses Socket.io dash client, which is a library that uh, makes everything a lot easier for you to connect to Socket.io. And within that, he's got just a little uh, function uh, or a hook that uh, is called use Socket.io, which really gets a notification that is passed or a handler that gets passed. And the handler just takes care of once it's actually received all the, the notifications. In this case, we get a notification on when we get connected and we get a notification when we actually receive a notification from, from a library. We then call the uh, notification handler that was passed in. Now, where do we pass in this notification handler? Well, there's a my notification uh, component that actually just does that. Right here, we say use socket and we pass it a handle notification. And so that's actually how we're able to subscribe to socket notifications. Uh, and I'll show you how we create those socket notifications very shortly. But let's look at what we do when we handle these notifications. When we handle the notifications, we basically just uh, do a little callback function uh, so that we can do all this stuff asynchronously and we don't, we're not pausing the screen or making the screen uh, less responsive. We actually just go get the list of notifications uh, and for each notification, we actually get the site information, we get the list information and we get the list of activities. And then we just put that in a nice big array of activities so that we can render it later. And then um, not sure why I had that highlighted. There you go. And so on, if we go back to the use MS Graph API component again, uh, so on the use MS Graph API, we do the get list of activities. How do we get the list of activities? Because the first thing we did so far, it was using socket IO to actually get notified that we have a list of activities, um, but we're not getting the list of activities. When we do get list of activities, we actually go to that list and we say, hey, show me what's happened um, since last time. And this is what we do that. We do that using the graph client and we call the get uh, list of activities um, list. All right, I'm gonna. I, I need to go a little bit faster here because I I I'm I'm eating someone else's time. Uh, so the that little clock thing or clock bell thing with the notifications. How do we do that? Well, really, it, it's the my notifications component, and really all we do is we again we still use socket IO. We get a handler for the notifications, and when when we get a notification that says, "Hey, you have something that needs to be displayed." We just kind of create a little stack here with a little bell and a little number. That's really all we do. Um, again, we're not constantly refreshing. We're not using a timer. We're just getting notification. All right, and that list thing at the at the top, uh, on the side here is the same idea. We just kind of when we get uh, the notification. We actually go get the list of notifications from a secret place, actually. And this is actually one of the things that um, Alex Trantiev has demonstrated in the past. But what we're doing is we're actually storing the list of uh, settings from the extension and the personalized setting for a user in a app settings.json file, which is stored in the user's OneDrive folder. I'm running out of time, so I'm not going to get to show you the OneDrive uh, document here, but that's a great thing. It allows us to actually have kind of roaming uh, settings that are not stored in a cookie or that are not stored uh, in, a, um, in a session variable or anything like that. We're actually storing all that in a settings.json and we're reading all that information. All right, let's continue. So when we get the badge, we actually get the navigation and we create a stack of all the badges with all the buttons uh, and then all the individual notifications that say this document was added, this document was modified. That's really all we're doing here. Uh, and then we render that in a panel that has actions for dismissing notification and for opening things. All right, I am skipping straight through to the end of uh, my presentation here. 
Um, you can actually find the code at this super long URL here, or you can search for aka.ms slash SPFX extensions. There's also an awesome blog post written by Joao that describes, uh, I'm sure, much more elo eloquently uh, how he's built the solution. This uh, solution is awesome. I strongly recommend you go take a look at it. Thanks, everyone, for your time, and thank you, Joao, for always being awesome. Back to you, Patrick. All right, thank you, Hugo, for that uh, fantastic demo and explanation there. Very cool uh, techniques and a very slick uh, implementation.